Hey guys, this is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio, and today let's do phase three in our five faces in five weeks challenge. So we've got two really cool cyberpunk characters finished. So today let's totally switch gears. Let's do a more fantasy type genre. We're gonna paint this awesome old dwarf warrior character. And he's gonna have all of these really great exaggerated features, this epic dwarf beard, all of that great stuff that makes the fantasy genre work. And that brings me to our main discussion point. Today, let's talk about story. At our core, concept artists and illustrators, we are visual storytellers. All of the shapes and lines and colors and design languages that we use all bring us back to this central element, telling a cool story leaving something lasting and interesting with our viewer. And the face gives us huge opportunities to tell a visual story. Since people naturally want to engage with depictions of the face, we can use that to deliver tons of subtle information and really create this whole implied world around the characters that we create. And if we take that a step further, People are really good at connecting mental dots and creating narratives when they first see a face. As artists, we can totally use that. We have to do surprisingly little real work. We only have to imply and nudge things in the right direction and let the viewer create the finished image in their own minds. So let's talk about a few specifics, some main drivers of visual stories that we can weave into our face paintings. And the first one is genre. These classic, well-known story archetypes, things like fantasy or sci-fi or steampunk, just to name a few. Now, genres are great for us because they do a lot of the heavy lifting. Just because I am painting a dwarf warrior, which you can correctly place in the fantasy genre, it lets the viewer make all kinds of assumptions about this character and the world that he lives in. So it's, it's like, okay, cool, dwarf warrior. He probably owns a large axe. There's a good chance that a dragon and a wizard are somewhere nearby, all of that stuff. It's all these things that the viewer already knows about this genre. And it lets them instantly know quite a bit about our character, and we've hardly done a thing except for defining him in the most general way. If we expand on that idea of genre, of using something familiar, something that everybody understands, and using it as the framework to kind of construct our own design, that's a really powerful tool for concept artists to use in all kinds of designs, faces included. We can really tap into this nostalgia. We can really make a, a pretty meaningful connection with our viewer just by making this dwarf warrior in the most general sense, just these beginning phases. We're already tapping into every story, every movie, every game that our viewer has ever experienced that had a dwarf warrior it creates this really powerful sense of nostalgia and they really identify it makes them engage it makes them really latch on in a powerful meaningful way this idea of borrowing authenticity from things that already exist is one of the most powerful tools that a concept artist has it's something that made my own work much better and much more effortless when I realized that I didn't have to do nearly as much work as I thought I did. I had to just imply and suggest and define things generally and the viewer would actually come into the process and complete the picture in their own mind. It's this less is more approach and it really works. A lot of the visual storytelling that we do is really subtle. It's almost subconscious. In fact, your viewer is really not aware of these things consciously. They're just sort of 
fueling their experience in the background. They're kind of driving those subconscious feelings that creates the ultimate effect of our painting, how it is received when they first look at it. And one of the most subconscious, kind of subtle ways we can drive this is with how we use light. Light, one of those most fundamental building blocks of art. How do we use that to actually tell a story? Now with this painting, it's pretty straightforward. He's being lit from above. It's sort of daylight. So there is some story there. We get a sense of where this guy is. But in other paintings, I have taken this in a really different way. For our two cyberpunk characters, for example, the light and the colors that I used give it more of a nighttime, kind of moonlight feel. And that really gives you a very different vibe. It makes it seem like this darker, more kind of dystopian look, just because of those color and lighting choices. We can do that in a number of different ways. You can put some mysterious cast shadow across a character's face. Give it that kind of film noir type look where there are slats of light shining rays across a character's face. We can use light in that way to tell a story. Another really great way, and again, I'm not really doing this in this painting, but if we add really bright edge lights to a face painting, that can tell a huge story. If we make the edge light a certain color, if you make it a fiery orange, it can make the character look like they're standing near a battlefield. If you make that edge light something really green or blue, it can give that face a really sci-fi look. So just by putting some thought into the lighting and color choices that we make on the faces that we paint, we can really give a lot of information. It's really subconscious, but we can tell our viewer where is this character? What's happening around them? What are they up to? Now let's dig a little deeper into story with expression, with personality. And we discussed personality quite a bit in week two, but it definitely has an effect on our story as well. So let's check this guy out. The overall expression and vibe that this character is putting out tells a story. With this character, I'm trying to put out this really stoic, tough, kind of humorless personality, this warrior. He has no time for nonsense. He's generally unimpressed with us, maybe even a little angry or annoyed. And I'm subtly hinting at that by using that bunched up area on his nose and his brow ridge to imply some subtle hostility. And it really works. You're totally getting that vibe just at this early phase. So there's loads of nuance and subtlety to be woven into our face designs in this way. And it all serves the story. It helps to create this fully realized person and their world in our viewer's mind. Another great bit of subtle storytelling can be added with some history. What has this character been through? What experiences or trauma does this guy wear on his face? For this guy, that's the scars. Every scar, every scratch and blemish that I add is another battle that this warrior has fought in. Another experience, another story. He's a survivor. In fact, just that we have made him kind of old tells a story in and of itself. He must be a great warrior to have made it this long in a tough world. So subtle cues, those tiny little details like scars, can tell you so much about a character. So always look for those opportunities. And as we get fairly close to a finished painting here, let's talk about all of the story cues that we can get from our character's culture. And there's so much fun dwarf cultural stuff going on here that tells us volumes about this guy. All of the hair design choices. So we've got the shaved sides of the head. All of these cool kind of tribal braids in his hair, in his beard. The jewelry on his beard and in his ears. Each one suggests some culturally significant meaning for him. The tattoos on his head, on his face and on his neck. It all gives this really strong sense 
of tribe, of where this character comes from, who he is. All of these things help make our character feel fully real. And that's what this is all about. Let's check out our finished product. And I love this guy. He's very fun, but he's also really layered and engaging. And there's just so much going on here. All of these subtle little subconscious design cues that just tell us all about the character, what he's been through, and the world that he lives in. And that's what visual storytelling is all about. Using these little design choices to make these characters take on a life of their own. For some really great learning resources for beginners all the way up to aspiring professionals, be sure to check out digitalpaintingstudio.com, linked below. Until next time, guys, paint something cool today. Take care.